Hey guys, so today I want to talk a bit about the test cases of homework four. And I want to devote some time to it because there is uh, some abstraction to uh, the various test cases. Um, so by that I mean I've I create in your homework assignment, you will find um, a like a testing function. So let me open the test file for now. Okay, so you will see that there is this special, there are a few special functions, and I even give the definition here, okay? Uh, you can ignore what they're doing, but uh, you should not igno ignore the test cases, of course. So the reason I created such um, defined checks, and again, I don't know if you recall from a, another video, but a defined check is just a function that you define that has some debugging information for when a test fails. It gives you a bit more information. So what I'm going to do here, let me just, um, I want to, I'm not going to run this code. I just want to explain what's going on here. So what you see here, so you'll have your homework assignment, right? And it just has these three lines. There's only three functions to implement here. Uh, and this is going to be um, the test fail, the the test file, um, and you're you're going to have some special functions to test code. Okay, so I'm going to go through each three of them. There's one per exercise. These functions, what they will do, in a nutshell, is first they will uh, parse automatically. So behind the scenes, they will call call parse AST to create an AST, right? Because the, the whole thing is you want to check the substitution, right? So what are, where am I, what am I um, trying to find and replace? So this is first parameter is going to be um, check subst, right? So the first thing is going to be the, um, the expression I want to find and replace. Okay. Secondly, is going to be the pair with the key and value, where the key is the variable uh, that I am searching for. And the value is what I want to replace for. Okay, so in this case, what do we have? The expression that we have, do our, that we are given, is a single variable x. And I write it with a datum. Okay, so it's going to be a quoted uh, code. So in this case is, if I have a variable and I want to replace x by 1, and again you write the symbol x, you don't write uh, ast, you know, you don't write s colon variable, um, quote x. You just write directly the symbol and then what check subs is going to do is going to parse automatically for you everything so that it becomes easier. So you will sh you will write something very succinct but internally behind the scenes what check subs is doing is parsing everything and then calling subs for you. Okay and then and then what it does it takes the result and it converts it back to a datum so it, it serializes it back to text so that you can see text versus text, okay? So if I'm given an x and I replex, replace x by 1, I'm expected to re return a 1, right? Because I replace x by 1. So if I give it a y, should be there should be no effect, so the result is a variable with y. If I have a number 10 and I replace x by 1, nothing happens. If I have a function call and I replace x by z, then the first parameter should be a z. So I can also replace the second parameter by z, and this is what I'll see. I can replace a variable that does not exist, and the expression will remain the same. Do notice that this is a function call, but I write it as I would write record code, just quoted. And the return of what I expect is also going to be quoted. Okay. Uh, and this is just because if you try to write ASTs by hand, it's very tedious and it takes a long time. So we want to use par parse AST automatically. So here's another example where we take a lambda and we want to replace x by 10, 
but because the x is shadowed you cannot replace the inner x right so what you return is the same lambda so in this case uh, i want to replace x by 10 but x is no longer a parameter so now i can replace it so it should return a lambda where the body is 10 um, and in this case we are finding and replacing a variable that does not exist so we return the same lambda in this case the lambda that we want to replace is hidden so nothing should happen All right so that's why you get the same expression back uh, in this case we want to replace the body by y i think we did that before ah uh, we did something similar this is very similar to this okay uh, you might want to write examples where you want to replace the body of an esta lambda and so on okay so now this is for exercise one right uh, let's go back exercise one is this one substitution now the test case is for um, exercise two so for that you have this check s colon eval and it only takes two parameters it's going to use your eval and your substitution function um, and then what it's going to take it's going to take a quoted code and it's going to execute it it's going to take the result and it's going to serialize it into code and show that this is what's the expected serialized result so if you give it a lambda right in this case you have a lambda and you are calling one what that's going to do it's going to return the body and replace y by one so that's why the result is this lambda okay and in this lambda what we're doing is we're evaluating a lambda and if you go to the rules lambda is a value therefore you just return it um, and in this case what you're doing is you have a lambda and you call it and you pass 10 so the body is just x so you should return 10 and as you can see because these are all quoted terms it becomes very easy to write test cases right but underneath again what you're doing is you are um, evaluating um, and you're parsing the result and then what you're doing is you're taking the result of eval and you're converting it back to test that's what the quote does so the quote is the reverse of parsing right it's like, kind of like two string uh, so these are all the test cases we have and then here what you'll see and this is a bit more involved as you might recall so now exercise three exercise three takes an environment and an expression right so the environment is the first parameter and the expression is here and finally in the last thing is going to be the expected results right so the environment as you know is a hash table but because a hash table is kind of verbose as well to write you just write um a list of pairs okay and each pair you have to put the little dot here and you write the variable name and the value that you want to assign it to so in this case i have an environment that has uh, where x is assigned to one and i want to evaluate x which is a variable and in lambda e when you evaluate a variable a variable is an expression what that does it will look up the value of x which is one so therefore you return one okay uh, of course if you evaluate a number you just return that number and here what you're doing is you're evaluating a, a lambda and you're passing it an empty closure sorry an empty environment so an environment where no variables are defined and as you might remember when you evaluate a lambda function declaration in lambda e what that does it creates a closure so you can see here on the left hand side the environment upon creation time which is your parameter here similarly if you try to evaluate the same lambda x but your initial environment has a y there then you will see it appear in the closure a y there in racket the fact that you write square brackets or parentheses or curly brackets is all equivalent they're all considered to be lists so you can also write it with curly bracket brackets so this example is exactly the same as before so similarly i can try to evaluate this expression which has an empty environment and what i'm giving it is a lambda x that returns three when i pass it three it returns three of course so this is a bit more involved 
where it returns it's a factory right because it's a lambda that returns another lambda i pass a tree what that's going to do is it's going to instantiate this x so what i see i'm returning this outer lambda but of course a lambda has to be evaluated to a closure and the close and the environment at that time of calling is x equal to assigned to three because of this assignment here. So X is assigned to three. Okay, this will make more sense once you call it. And these two are just two more complicated examples um, that I'm passing. And I'm, pa I'm showing them that, you know, if you, you call this function with S eval should be the same as calling any function with an empty environment with e eval. Okay, so that's what this example is about. And then finally, what I did was I created some functions that create AST terms so that you can have um, more high level test cases that are more complicated. And th these are just the church encoding examples that I showed you in the slides. Okay, so these, this is all that you need for that. Uh, and that's about it. So now let me go back to the slides just to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. So again, this is just an explanation. This slide, I'm just explaining the note, the, um, the encoding or, or the format of how do you write a hash, ta a hash table in the test cases, right? So using the quoted terms. Um, and then I wrote uh, the idea of serializ serializing expressions which is that quote function, which you can use to take uh, AST and convert it back into code. Uh, so here is the serialization of the code. So you will see the, on the right-hand side the AST term that you would have. And if you pass it to um, E colon co quote, you will get this code. So it's the reverse of parsing, right? So parsing goes this way and, uh, sorry, Parsing goes this way, this direction, from left to right, and quoting goes right to left. So this is a more interesting example where you have a closure, which gives you this big AST term. You may notice that the contents of a closure is the hash table, which appears here. Uh, and then a lambda, which is created here. Notice that a single parameter appears with the, with the list. And the body as well appears as a list with a single element. Similarly, for function call, you have a list with a single element. Okay. Uh, and now this is just a summary of more some test cases. But the test case is already included in the test file. Okay, that's about it. I hope you have fun with homework four, and happy uh, spring break. <laughs>